I find it really interesting that for all of the millions and millions of dollars that get thrown into massive blockbuster movies, all of it is entirely dependent on what people can be fucked to go see that week. Today, I really wanted to talk about the biggest box office bombs of all time, because I just find it kind of fascinating how judging the profitability of a movie is generally a bit more complicated than you might think. You would think it would be as simple as just their worldwide gross minus the production budget to work out how much money it made, but it's actually a little bit more unnecessarily complicated than that. You also have to factor in the marketing costs, which are always ridiculously high. Sometimes the studio tells us how much they spent and sometimes we kind of just have to figure it out ourselves. But generally, it's always going to be at least like half of the same amount they spent actually making the movie. Which means that even if a movie makes back its budget, it can still have lost money because of how much they spent advertising it. Now, usually with videos like this about movies, I would actually go and watch them so I can have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. But I feel like with this one, it would be more appropriate to not watch them because no one else did. This isn't going to be like a complete list of the biggest box office bombs of all time in order or anything, because it's kind of a bit difficult to work out exactly what the proper order should be because of things like inflation and all that. So here's just a bunch of random ones I wanted to talk about because I thought they'd be interesting. Now, of course, just as an unnecessary reminder, the amount of money a movie made is not at all relative to its quality. Remember that Blade Runner 2049 lost both $88 million and my faith in humanity. Also, it's important to me to clarify that I'm not here to lie at any of these for underperforming because I can't imagine what that's like after working on these for so long. It's not cool, okay? <laughs> Starting off with arguably the most understandable box office bomb of all time is 2019's Cats, which I think has it a bit different to the others in this video because it's not that people weren't aware of it and more that they were just too afraid to buy a ticket. With its massive $100 million budget, Cats is said to have lost Universal between 70 to $114 million. I did actually work up the courage to see this in cinemas in its opening week, partially out of morbid curiosity and also because I really wanted to drag a friend along with me because I'm a terrible person. Also, having seen both Cats and Morbius now, I am begging you, please don't go and see bad movies, ironically. It is never worth it. On paper, financially, Cats seem like a log. Being based off a hugely popular stage show with slightly less terrifying characters, and with acclaimed director Tom Hooper attached, who's done other musicals like Les Miserables, and also has a very expensive amount of star power with the likes of Jason Derulo and his oversized dick bulge, Taylor Swift, Knuckles the Echidna, and no one else of importance. So I think it really goes to show how none of those things things matter at all when you turn everyone into horrifying nightmare creatures. I think they were trying to go for like a middle ground between having entirely CGI characters while also retaining the faces of the celebrities that people were seeing the movie for instead of just doing costumes like in the play. The majority of Katz's budget was put into turning those 500 celebrities into furries, but this was obviously a lot harder than they thought it would be because I remember that they actually released a patched version of the movie while it was still in cinemas, but this was more to do with the fact that Katz was just as much of a nightmare behind the scenes as it was to watch. The VFX artists who worked on the film, who are also the same heroes who fixed the Sonic movie, reportedly were doing up to 80 to 90 hour working weeks, and spent six months alone getting just the trailer for the movie ready, and then were only given a remaining four months to get the rest of the entire movie done. All this while being abused by Tom Hooper, who didn't know how visual effects worked, and then a ton of them got fired at the end anyway after the movie came out. It was also said that they only completed the visual effects hours before the movie came out, so I think it's all a very reasonable explanation as to why the movie looks how it does. I do commend the studio for taking a risk with a unique visual style because it's clear that at some point someone did have an idea for how this movie was supposed to look, but I just think maybe they shouldn't have released a horror movie in December. It was a really tough time being a 2D animated movie in the early 2000s, to the point where even Disney was having trouble with Treasure Planet and Atlantis when compared to the results that Pixar was getting, so I guess it's understandable that other movies like Titan AE were having the same problem. This was made by the very short-lived Fox and animation studios, which was made to compete with Disney, and I don't think they were being very subtle about that at all. The first of their movies was Anastasia, which while being its own original thing, don't get me wrong, played it a lot safer by just doing pretty much exactly what Disney had been doing for the past 40 years. With their second theatrical release, I think they were willing to take more of a chance with a non-musical sci-fi movie aimed at an older audience that ended up losing Fox close to a hundred million dollars. Fox Animation Studios ended up closing just 10 days after the movie came out, and this was after Fox 
Fox had already laid off 300 of their employees while Titan AE was still being made, meaning the movie had to be finished at Blue Sky, the guys who would go on to make Ice Age. The reason Titan AE was so expensive to make was because of the way it combined both CGI for the background and environments as well as traditional animation for the characters. And it's just a real shame that it turned out the way that it did because it's a pretty cool movie if you can get past the early 2000s-ness of it. Another unfortunately timed animated movie that I would argue is even more obscure than Titan AE is Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas. Whenever I think of pre-Kung Fu Panda DreamWorks, my mind always goes straight to the Prince of Egypt or the Road to El Dorado and maybe Spirit if I'm having a slow day, but I genuinely always forget about this one. Sinbad was the very last 2D animated feature DreamWorks ever made because it resulted in a loss of $125 million, which nearly bankrupted them had they not immediately clapped back with the box office slayer Shrek 2. It was Sinbad's financial disappointment and the success of Shrek that convinced DreamWorks to make the switch to 3D movies entirely. So I guess in some roundabout way, Sinbad died to give us Megavind, so maybe it was worth it. I think the Road to El Dorado also didn't do great when it came out a few years earlier, even though it would go on to become a much bigger hit later, but they decided to give it another shot anyway. But with Shrek making nearly 500 million, I think it wasn't exactly a tough choice for DreamWorks what direction to take. Also, it came out a week before the first Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> so, do you guys remember Mars Needs Mums? No. I feel like a lot of people know about this movie, but I have never met anybody who has actually seen it. And I think this may be another case like Cats where they just scared away their entire audience. Mars Needs Mums was made by Image Movers Digital, an animation company founded by Back to the Future and Who Framed Roger Rabbit director Robert Zemeckis, who by all means has given us some incredible movies, but for the last like 20 years has been absolutely obsessed with making these motion capture movies. Mars Needs Mums made $40 million somehow, against a budget of 150 million, losing Disney a total of, wait for it, 140 million dollars. One of the other most notorious Disney flops was John Carter in 2012, which I think may actually be the biggest box office bomb of all time. I mean, don't quote me on that or anything, but it is the top one on Wikipedia at the moment, so I guess... Right? This movie cost a total of $264 million to make, and that's not even including the marketing cost, which brought it up to a total of $350 million, which is like absolutely crazy. It's actually listed as the ninth most expensive movie ever made and is the only one in the top 10 that isn't part of a massive franchise like the MCU or Pirates of the Caribbean. I personally think its box office intake was pretty good for a standalone movie without Spider-Man in it, but John Carter also had the extra pressure of needing to gross something stupid like $700 million to have justified a sequel because around that same time, Disney had just made the number one on that list, Pirates of the Caribbean 4. I hate you. So yeah, it wasn't really a great time to be the guys that made John Carter. <laughs> There's been a number of reasons given as to why this one didn't go to plan, like for one being that the original title of the book it was based on was A Princess of Mars. And so of course the studio immediately panicked because there was just no way in hell that any self-respecting person with a penis was ever going to see something with the word princess in it, because those are for girls. John Carter of Mars was going to be the backup plan, but funnily enough, Mars Needs Mums actually at least partially contributed to them dropping that too, because that had only just come out the year earlier and so scared them off using the word again as if that was the problem with that movie. So ultimately it was stripped down to the much more vague John Carter, which kind of just doesn't really tell you what the movie is actually about. I also wanted to read you this from Wikipedia. Disney also reportedly believed that the sex appeal of the popular Taylor Kitsch being shirtless throughout the movie would draw women to see the film, as women are otherwise averse to science fiction. Now it makes sense why the marketing for this movie was so shit, right? Another one from Disney was The Lone Ranger only a year later, which is listed as the second biggest of all time on Wikipedia with an estimated 160 to 190 million dollar loss fucking ouch. It's okay though, it's Disney, they can afford it. Then there was Mortal Engines, which was like the movie that had the cities on wheels, with the marketing headline going on about how this was a Peter Jackson movie, when really he was just the third credited for the screenplay and one of the producers. This one had a budget anywhere between 100 and 150 million dollars, but only grossed 83 million, for an altogether 175 million dollar total loss for the studio, which is absolutely insane. I think this one had something to do with the fact that it came out alongside Spider-Verse, which wasn't the big biggest box office draw on its own, but then the following week had Aquaman and Mary Poppins, so <laughs> Monster Trucks was a kids movie released in 2017 about a monster that lives inside of a truck, and that's why it's called 
monster truck. For some reason, they gave this a ridiculously huge $125 million budget and ended up losing Paramount almost the exact same amount. I read that the idea for this movie came from the president of Paramount working with his four-year-old son, thinking that this could be another Transformers for them where they could merchandise the shit out of it. But obviously the real nail in the coffin was that this was released on the same weekend as the Bye Bye Man. And I'm sure that was the easiest decision anyone has ever had to make. The battleship movie that Hasbro did that one time that has the absolutely insane premise of turning a board game into an alien invasion movie is so crazy that I kind of love it. Not that I've actually seen it though. This grossed a surprisingly high 303 million, but then unfortunately also had the high budget of 220 million. Guys, looking a little more into it, it turns out it was originally meant to be a 150 million budget and was almost straight up cancelled because they were worried about it going over budget, which would have cost them something like 30 million. But then the chairman of Universal said that it would cost them less to increase the budget of the movie instead of cancelling it. And I don't think that guy still has his job. If you've never heard of a movie called The Adventures of Pluto Nash, then don't worry, I sure haven't and apparently neither did anybody else in 2002. This is a sci-fi movie starring Eddie Murphy that from the looks of it was very fondly received by critics, but only grossed 7 million against a budget of 100 million dollars, and then another 20 million on marketing. Guys, what happened here? I also really wanted to do a quick tidbit talking about the big budget movies that had the very unfortunate release date of 2020, since obviously that would become the year where it was basically impossible for anything to make money. Obviously with cinemas being shut down worldwide for the most part, the options for movie studios were either to delay them for as long as they possibly could under the assumption that cinemas would surely have to open up eventually, or just dump them onto streaming services and try to get some of their money back with the licensing or rental charges. Which is why some of Pixar's movies like Turning Red or Onward are still considered flops, even though they went straight onto Disney Plus and made their money back that way. One of Disney's biggest losses in 2020 was the live action remake of Mulan, which with the pre-COVID budget of $200 million only managed to make about 70 million while their other remakes have had a pattern of getting a pretty casual 1 billion each. This was meant to release in theaters in March 2020, but they delayed it all the way until August until they just gave up and released it on Disney Plus for $30. We've got to have money. Mulan actually did pretty well on streaming and was the top rented on a few platforms for a while, so I still think it did alright given the rather unprecedented circumstances, but it just goes to show how bad 2020 was for movies when even a Disney live action remake wasn't turning a profit. The other really really big pandemic bomb was Wonder Woman 1984, which was meant to come out in June 2020 but then got pushed all the way to December of that year because WB kind of panicked after even Christopher Nolan's Tenet didn't make the money despite grossing $360 million. It did eventually released in cinemas when things died down a little bit while also being released on HBO Max at the same time for the people who weren't ready to die yet just to pay for overpriced popcorn, with it eventually making a grand total of $169 million, which again, given pandemic numbers, is actually pretty good, but that was against a $200 million budget, so this one would have lost Warner around $100 million as well. And the last one I wanted to talk about is Final Fantasy The Spirits Within, which is a movie that I think a total of like four people know of maybe. <laughs> Directed by the creator of the Final Fantasy series, Spirits Within set out to achieve the extremely ambitious goal of being the first photorealistic 3D animated movie, which was a hell of a task to promise only six years after Toy Story had humans that looked like this. Four years of work later wound up costing them a whopping $137 million, which would be closer to like $190 million today, but then unfortunately it only grossed about $85 million. I have actually seen Spirits Within and I did like it, but the weirdest thing to me is that they labeled it as a Final Fantasy fantasy movie when it has like absolutely nothing to do with the series at all. I mean, maybe it was a brand recognition thing, but even still, a series like Final Fantasy doesn't strike me as the kind of name that would get a ton of people into cinemas anyway. Maybe I could sneak in and watch Final Fantasy Spirits Within. Especially for an animated one aimed at an older audience, which rarely ever do well. And I guess because of its title, it was also a video game movie, which we all know have a tremendous track record. And even with those three massive red flags, I honestly think 85 million is pretty good. I think they may have been banking on people wanting to check out how advanced the animation looks for the time. Again, this was 2001, awesome video games look like this, be nice, okay? Spirits Within actually caused a little bit of an uproar at the time, because Square had this whole plan where the model of the main character of the movie was going to be 
reused as other leading roles in future movies as a kind of digital actor, and then promoted this in the most tasteful way possible with a bikini photo shoot in Maxim magazine. The idea of this new technology allowing people to just replace real actors with 3D characters kind of freaked some people out, including even Tom Hanks. But fortunately for them, the only other thing she appeared in since was a short demonstration video the animation team made for the Animatrix. And that about wraps up everything I wanted to talk about for now, but I mean, none of this beats Morbius flopping twice.